Shannon Skinner and welcome to another episode of Extraordinary Women TV. Today I'll be speaking with a Canadian singer-songwriter and actor who is the voice of many animated characters for television including Nessa in My Big Big Friend, Sister Bear in The Bernstein Bears, Jane in Jane and the Dragon, and Atomic Betty which won her a Gemini. Well, joining me in the studio is Atomic Betty herself, Taja Eisen. Welcome to the show, Taja. Thank you. I'm glad it's, to be here. It's so nice having you here. Thank you. Uh, Atomic Betty, now, you were the voice for a very, very popular character. Now, this was some time ago, a few years back. Um, but uh, it won you a Gemini. It did, yes. <laughs> that was an incredible honor. What was it like for you to stand on the stage and, and accept that award? It was, um, it was wonderful. I mean, it, was, uh, it came sort of at the end of our, of our three seasons. It was kind of a nice, a nice send-off for us. And it was actually an ensemble award that we won. Um, so I got to go up there and accept it with, uh, with my fellow cast members. And it was just a really nice way to kind of cap um, what had been three to five years of a very successful show and a wonderful cast and an amazing crew and, and a tremendous honor to be recognized like that by the, uh, by the voiceover community as well. So it really, it meant a lot, that kind of recognition. Now you've, you've spent uh, a number of years uh, as an actor and more recently, and we're going to be talking more about your acting, uh, but more recently you have uh, been really working on your music career, which, uh -huh, is, yeah. which is wonderful. And you've got a great jazzy voice. Um, so tell us a little bit, you've got an EP and you're working on a full album. Let's just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, describe the style of your music. Um, I like to describe my music as uh, soulful, jazzy pop. Um, I think if I were to choose three artists that I try to pull together, um, kind of the, the introspection of Joni Mitchell and the soul of Stevie Wonder and the, kind of, and the piano prowess of Elton John, those are kind of three of my biggest influences and the sounds that I I think I synthesize in my own work. You've just spent some time in London working with uh, some fairly stellar producers yes. <laughs> on uh, an upcoming album and I know you can't say too too much about it quite yet but what can you tell us? Um, well I had the amazing opportunity to work with um, a couple of producers that have um, that have produced some of my some of my favorite artists. Um, one of the producers John Kelly he um, did a lot of production for uh, Kate Bush and he worked with Tori Amos um, and the other gentleman, um, Paul Wickens, he's um, Paul McCartney's keyboardist and the musical director on tour. And uh, I spent six weeks in London, England with them um, producing, uh, producing some of my songs. And it was an incredible learning experience. It taught me a lot, about, um, a lot about production and gave me a lot of ideas for self-producing um, some of my own material, which is uh, what I'm moving into doing now. Um, so it was a, a great experience. So more to come uh, in terms of the singing songwriting career and we're going to be rooting for you and speaking of rooting, uh, Atomic Betty, <laughs> uh, I'd love to talk about uh, the background, um, uh, this part of your career as a, a voice actor. Mm -hmm. um, we hear the voices and we see often cartoon characters or animated characters, but we don't really necessarily know the person behind uh, behind them and of course you've, you've just, you're presently uh, in production with Nessa? Yes, my big, big friend. Uh, pardon me, yes. you're presently in production with my big, big friend playing the leading role of Nessa? Yes. A tall giraffe with glasses. <laughs> yes, a pink giraffe. Uh, can we hear some Nessa? Uh, sure. Um, Hi, I'm Nessa. I'm Lily's big, big friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very cute show. Are you uh, the center of the party wherever you go? Nessa? People, no, They're, you. Oh. As, wherever you oh. go, do people ask you to go into character and um, say your sometimes voices? Sometimes, yeah. it, it has been known to happen. <laughs> so take us through the process that you go through. I mean, you, you've created a number of different voices and characters from Atomic Betty to Nessa and Bernstein Bears mm -hmm. and a number of characters, Jane, Jane the Dragon. But what is the process that you go through to develop uh, a voice for a character? Um, 
Well, the process of developing a voice for a character starts with um, the, the audition breakdowns that are, um, that are sent out before the audition. They'll give um, kind of an overview of the character, the character's age and personality, plus a little excerpt of the script. So before I go into the audition, I can start playing around with, uh, um, with some ideas. Um, sometimes it'll be very clear cut, like for example, Jane, um, she had to be British. So all I had to do was, you know, practice my, my, my British accent. Um, and I knew the character was of an age similar to my own at the time. So that one wasn't, a, you know, a, a big stretch apart from the accent. But um, for something like, uh, something like Nessa, where I do put on a voice that's quite different from my own, it's, it's a combination of uh, sort of knowing that it's a, a show geared towards a preschool age audience. So I'm going to be, you know, coming up with a voice that's kind of very high energy and very cartoony and very engaging, and um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what goes into it. Then there's also an interplay with with the director, who will, you know, make some suggestions as to how to find the character's voice. And now the Good to Know Minute. Taja, it's my Good to Know Minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. Um, so my, uh, my tip for success would be um, to strive for constant uh, productivity. And even if, it's, even if it's small steps, I mean, my, one of my mom's favorite sayings is inch by inch, it's a cinch. And I never really understood that until I was trying to kind of get my career off the ground as a musician. And even if it's, if it's a small thing, if it's you know, promoting yourself online or if it's sitting down and doing a bit of composing, there's always something that you can be doing to propel yourself towards your goals. So don't stagnate, you know, keep going, even if it's bit by bit. And that's good to know, and thanks for that. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay with us. And now for more Extraordinary Women. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner and I'm speaking with Taja Eisen. She is a singer-songwriter and voice actor based here in Toronto. So how much of an influence did uh, animation um, have in your life growing up and watching cartoons with uh, you know, wanting to, to do that kind of work then? Um, what kind of influence did it have on you as, um, an, as an actor? It had uh, a huge influence. I mean, I was... I was the kid who loved all the Disney movies, who would watch them over and over, who knew all the songs, who would... I think my parents took me uh, to see The Lion King and Aladdin in theaters, so it was such a big... It was a big part of my life um, as, a, as a younger child, so um, it was that much cooler to get into it as, uh, at the age that I did, around 10 or 11. Okay, so one doesn't become Atomic Betty overnight. <laughs> I mean, that was a huge success for you. It was. What does it feel like to be Atomic Betty? Um, it's something I'm still very proud of. Um, I, it, it's the first, the first show that I talk about when people say, oh, you're a voice actor, what do you do? Anything I might know. I say, well, have you heard of a show called Atomic Betty? Um, and it's, uh, yeah, a great source of pride for me. And I still, you know, have a lot of affection for that show. Is there anything in that character that you can identify with? Uh, any Atomic Betty and Taja Eisen? Um, <laughs> definitely. There's definitely some Betty, a lot of me and Betty, a lot of Betty and me uh, at this point. But uh, I remember at the time um, when, I, when I was recording the show being very, uh, feeling, identifying very strongly with how much of a strong female character Betty was. She was, she was a leader. She was captain of her own spaceship. She, you know, saved the world. And she was, in addition to being such a great role model for all of the, all of the girls who watched the show, um, a great role model for me as the actor as well. You get a script, and then what happens? Um, I will go into the studio, um, either by myself or with um, a few other actors if we have a lot of scenes together. And I mean, that, that's more the exception that we uh, record ensemble style, but that is a lot of fun. Um, so I'll go in studio, um, and there's a, there's a voice director who will, um, who will say, okay, we're doing this block of lines from line one to line 30, say. Um, I'll go through, I'll do a take of those lines. Um, afterwards, the voice director will give me some direction, say, oh, add a bit more energy here, modify this line in some way. 
um, and then we'll do another run and then we'll move on. Is there a character you haven't played that you'd love to um, have the leading role? Uh, I haven't played. I haven't played any villains. <laughs> I, I think Give that would be villain. interesting. Yeah, I think it has something to do with the fact that I have this very kind of high, clear speaking voice. So I, um, I play a lot of, uh, you know, the sort of the, the go-getter girls. The, which you know, which is great. But I think it'd be interesting to play, uh, play somebody a little, a little more devious. <laughs> Now, I understand that for uh, young, a lot of young uh, male voices, um, cartoon characters are often girls. Yes. Uh, has this been your experience? Um, not so much mine, um, but uh, my sister, actually, who's also on My Big Big Friend, she plays, uh, she plays Yuri, who's a little boy. Um, she gets a lot of roles uh, playing uh, little boys' voices because she has a very interesting voice. It's kind of, it's, it's raspy and it's, uh, and it's a little deeper. So she has this incredible range where she can play not only uh, young women, she's 16, um, but she can also play the voices of young boys. Would, would you rule out uh, actually appearing live in live um, action oh, as no, an actor? Absolutely not. That's, that's still something I'd like yeah. to do. Um, voiceover acting was really great because um, staying in school was always a priority for me. And so rather than having you know, 18 hour days on set where I was you know, tutored, here and there, I, I wanted to remain in school as a full-time student. So even when I was um, 11 years old and in the Toronto production of The Lion King and doing two or three animated shows weekly, I still, you know, I was a full-time student and that's always been my, it's always been my, a, a big priority of mine. So that's kind of why voice appealed to me as well. But for sure, I'd like to do uh, more on camera and more theater. And Taja, where can people uh, check out your music? Um, Hear you sing and play. Oh. <laughs> well, I uh, a lot of my music can be found online. I'm constantly uh, promoting it and sharing it there. Um, but I'm a, a regular performer in uh, in Toronto and in York Region as well. I uh, I had the opportunity a few weeks ago to uh, open for the comedian David Brenner at the Richmond Hill Center for the Performing Arts. That must have been exciting. That was really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being here today, Taj. I really um, enjoyed speaking with you, Thank and you. I wish you all the best with your upcoming album and with your career as a, a voice actor. Thank you so much for having me. If you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV, visit our website at extraordinarywomentv.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.